one. We just calibrated the Criterion 2 and it says it's ready, um, but the proper thing to do after calibration is to run QC. So that's what we've got here. Uh, we are um, working on this chemi or <laughs> this urinalysis chemistry analyzer. Um, it just does the chemical part of analysis of a patient's urine. So what we're going to do is make sure that the instrument is working correctly, and that's what a control does. Um, so a calibration um, makes it so that the data inside the analyzer's computer knows um, whether a, a result is going to be accurate or not, and to make sure that the analyzer itself mechanically is working correctly and the computer is working correctly with the calibration um, the calibration curve which we set with our calibrator uh, we need to run this QC after okay um, QC is run at a beginning of a shift it's also run after calibration as you just heard it's also run in accordance to if you have a problem with the analyzer you've replaced a cr critical part or done maintenance on a critical part uh, it might also be that you're troubleshooting something, and so you would use QC during that time. So this is um, external QC. It's a liquid, and um, you have two levels here. Level one is usually the, um, the normal, and level two is usually the abnormal. So usually in QC, you're going to end up seeing that um, that the higher the QC level, usually that's the abnormal. Okay, so this is QC level one and QC level two. So since they are squeeze bottles, um, I cannot squeeze them automatically onto the strip. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to aliquot them into the labeled, um, the labeled tubes. Oh, the best practice to do is to also date them and today's the 12th and my initials so put them in the rack um 112 and then my initials so what ends up happening is these um, may deteriorate over time due to light exposure um, or settling so if we're doing qc troubleshooting uh, we might have to reallocate from this, and that is when you would um, the step of rerunning new QC or sorry, rerunning original QC. Just because you're aliquoting from the original um, the original uh, bottles does not mean that's new QC. So the second step, so at first step of uh, QC troubleshooting is rerun original, sorry, rerun original QC. So that would be. From here, I would aliquot a new version from here instead of keeping the ones that I had already aliquoted. Then the next one um, of uh, run new QC would be I would chuck these bottles and get a new set of bottles. Okay, so um, I've already mixed them. They've come to room temperature, so I'm going to squeeze a little bit into each. Okay. <clears throat> That's QC level two. This is QC level one. Ooh, that's a wild color. All right, so if you'll notice, uh, QC number two is on the right, and it has more of an amber color, whereas the one on the left is more yellow. Um, and they're both clear, so there aren't any microscopic components. So we're just looking at the difference of normal chemistry of the urine versus abnormal chemistry of the urine. So this one might have bilirubin. Well, it does because it is abnormal, um, but the color would come from bilirubin. Um, okay. Let's go ahead and start. So with these, you want to make sure you have the right strips. So we have the chem strips here. We get them out, and if you'll notice, you can actually dip these and look at them um, by yourself without an analyzer. Um, but again, that's with interpretation bias, so it's best to have it on an analyzer in order to measure it. We have specific gravity, pH, leukocyte esterase, and um, the 
Leukocyte esterase is an enzyme that comes out of the granules of a WBC. So if a patient has an infection uh, with bacteria, um, you would expect the leukocyte esterase to be positive um, if the body is reacting appropriately. Um, nitrate, um, and this is also, again, for, um, for bacteria um, being in the urine from a UTI. We have protein. That's going to happen or be positive if you have damage due to the glomerulus. Uh, glucose uh, would be present only if the patient's blood glucose is um, within the renal threshold and in um, and is not I'm sorry. If it's in the renal threshold, which means that um, it's being reabsorbed in the nephron the way it's supposed to in the proximal convoluted tubule, but if it's there, um, it means that obviously the blood glucose is higher than uh, it should be, so it's spilling out into the urine. Ketones are if you have um, if you have fat breakdown in order to get energy instead of your um, your sugars like glucose. Uh, this is your abilinogen UBG, and it's colorless. Bilirubin is another form, um, and that's all in the, uh, the process of breaking down bilirubin. Um, bilirubin is going to give you that um, yellowy um, or yellowy brown color. Um, so if you're ever looking at the at the urine and you see it looking like this, you know, if it looks icteric, you know, you know that, um, you know that term ic icterus, that means it has bilirubin in it. Um, and this is the blood pad, the erythrocytes or hemoglobin pad, which means that it detects hemoglobin and myoglobin honestly better than it does intact RBCs, but it detects all three here. Okay. And it even tells you how many seconds it takes for, um, the actual um, analysis to be okay to look at if you were doing interpreting this yourself. Okay, so that was the long and short of it. Um, we pull it out just like we did the calibrating tube, um, but notice that the dipsticks pad already has um, colors on it, and it matches. It matches here. Okay, so negative. It should look 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 like the negative. All right, so first we're going to do the normal QC. All right, so it says that the analyzer is ready. I'm gonna to try to do this and let you see it all at the same time. So this is gonna be very interesting. Okay, I hope you can see that screen. Okay, so it says that it's ready and to press start. So if we were, if this was a specimen or a QC or whatever we're doing, uh, we want to make sure to quickly mix it before we press start so that anything that we dip this into is going to be okay. And this has been exposed to light for a while, so who knows how accurate this is going to be. All right, let's press start. Then it's going to tell us to prepare the strip, which means to dip it. We pour this down a little bit so that we get it on there. We wipe it off on the side, okay, any excess. And then we're going to insert the strip into the analyzer. Put it right there. It says insert one, so it's still waiting. It's doing an internal clock of how long it's going to be before it measures it. Okay, so now it comes, it takes it, it says please wait and it's going to measure it when the appropriate time happens. Okay, dip strip, stip, yeah, strip two. So this analyzer is great because you can do more than one, okay? And it's a walk away. Now, the Eurospec that we also use in class is um, an analyzer that you can only do one at a time. Okay, so we're not going to do the, oh, well, we didn't, we didn't do a second one, so dip. All right, the printer is offline now. Um, so that's how 
it's run. I didn't do the second one um, because it kind of got a little out of hand. <laughs> All right, but that's how you actually do it. So I'm going to run the second one as well. Uh, just give me a minute. So in order to bring the printer back online, I press start, okay? And then we're going to get another strip ready. We press start again. It says prepare the strip. This is our abnormal QC. Dipping the strip, putting any extras on the side there, inserting it onto the feeder. And notice it's already changing colors. So that's good. And it's gonna be ready in just a second and come and get it. It's taking that time, that internal time that it knows to do. Okay. And it's if we're going to do a third one, which we're not. So um, we'll do a patient in a minute, as long as our QC is okay. So we gotta see our QC first. So the first QC was beautiful. Everything is normal, okay? Normal and negative. And that's what we would expect. And so it's measuring the abnormal QC now, as you can hear. And now it's gonna print it. Meanwhile, it would be taking in the third one. Okay. So the printer offline actually means that I need to replace the, the paper. Um, I'm going to do that in a different video so this doesn't get crazy long and uh, we'll take it from there. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you next time. Bye.